Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. When I say Philip Glass, you probably don't think horror movies, but an early film score of his is the 1992 score to Candyman. It's a really interesting score in that it uses a quite restricted palette of instruments, a couple of great themes, well worth taking a look at. Let's look at Helen's theme from Candyman today. <music> Welcome, and I'm glad you're here. And if this is the second or third video of mine that you've seen, and you're getting some value out of these analyses and some of these tips and tricks, or maybe the where to begin videos about basic music theory ideas, now's a great time to subscribe. I'm trying to build a, a kind of a network, a community here of musicians who are interested in becoming their own theorists. I hope this is music theory for everyone. Well, uh, Philip Glass is a favorite composer of mine and, of course, enormously influential in the film and gaming community. His instrumental forms of harmony and his approaches are just everywhere. So Candyman is a 1992 film directed by Bernard Rose. It features Virginia Madsen and Tony Todd. It became a pretty big series of films, and I think there was a TV series as well. But this 92 film is kind of the the sort of sweet spot. And it was a big success despite um, some reservations on Glass's part. He felt that he, as far as my research has been able to tell, I don't know this personally, but he felt that the original intent of the film was somehow uh, redirected by the producers. And his score is kind of arty. Now, he'd already done Kayani Scotsi, Thin Blue Line, the score to Mishima by the time he did this, although this, this predates scores to like The Truman Show or The Hours, but there's a lot of the same concepts there. Let's take a look at Helen's theme, which is a simple melodic um, piece, which is kind of creepy, but it has a couple of beautiful like tricks, Philip Glassy tricks built in, well worth taking a look at. Let's play it and pick it apart. Helen's theme is in C minor. And it begins with a simple, what we call a Alberti bass figuration. I'm playing root, fifth, third, fifth, or low, high, middle, high, low, high, middle, high, low, high, middle, high, low, high, middle, high, low, high, middle, high. Now, that low, high, middle, high figuration, it's almost like a picking pattern on guitar, and it goes back a long way. Listen to how it sounds when we put the melody on top. I love this moment. An inverted F chord. Now, just notice what the left hand is doing. This simple pattern has been varied in order to create a little propulsion in the bottom. Uh, the first instance we have uh, but it doesn't rest when it goes to the five chord G. We've got a walk up back to the C. And then in measure four, this is an inverted F minor chord and it also walks up. B flat, B natural, C. Glass is a, a master of these tiny little pushes that have, you know, sort of a relationship to dominant chords, but kind of more float freely. And this sort of overall sound, it, it feels kind of like familiar. It's kind of music boxy, but creepy because of those chromatic tones, surprising chromatic tones. Let's continue. It happens again. There's the G7 walk up. And there's the A flat again, but now we actually have an A flat chord. And, you know, that A flat major is uh, kind of bright, sort of uplifting. It sounds great in this context. Look what the A flat chord does. There, again, there's the, a figuration, there's a pattern in the left hand that it's not just a uh, simple 
alternation of just three notes, but rather the bottom note walking or an inner voice changing in order to create a moment of counterpoint almost. It's certainly um, not, it's certainly passing chords as, the, as we flow from one thing to another. It's, it's detailed attention to supporting a simple diatonic melody, A flat. A little passing chord there to an inverted E flat. And, and this is G7 flat 13, my goodness. Love that E flat hanging out on the top. Back to the A flat. Same trick, E flat. There's the G7 again. Back to the top. There's the G7 walking up, back to C minor. Here's an inverted F minor and a walk up chromatically, so spooky. Here's our G7 again, walk up, ascending melodic minor. Remember we were talking about that earlier? Back to C. And now a second ending. We're gonna go up to a high C and it's the A flat major chord. And this beautiful moment resolving to E flat. So the second ending does something really, really different. We've got an A flat chord walking down, resolving to E flat. And that A flat resolution to E flat, which is the relative major of C minor. Now, there's a second page in the score that I have, and I've seen this transcribed kind of without this content or somewhat different. In fact, this simple theme appears a bunch of times in the film. Um, the film itself is scored with this kind of like lovely tinkly music box instrument called a celeste, which, you know, sort of originally made famous by Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite. And um, there's organ and chorus or choir. That's pretty much it. So it has a kind of a gothic weight to it and uh, the set as it is in in Cabrini Green that uh, housing sort of notorious housing project the the overall feeling of everything is kind of a weird horror movie type cathedral space and the story I kind of worth seeing the film I've seen I can't say that I like the movie exactly but um, the story and the film itself have a real gravitas. Well, that gravitas is really in the second page. So it, here we go to block chords. And I love this moment here where we have a simple C minor triad repeated like insistently. And then this G back to C minor. Okay, so we just heard a couple of rather strongly dissonant voices within the chord. I'm not going to play the bass. We'll just talk about what's happening in the right hand. C minor. A sus2 back to the C and then octaves walking up. Remember that walk up that was in the bass? It suddenly got to be in the chord there. And then going on to the F minor, an inverted F minor. There's our walk up, B flat, B, and the C stays there, and so we get this. We're gonna hear that kind of strong dissonance some more as we go on into this page again. So we're back to our C minor. And the A flat is next. I love that sound. Walking down to E flat major, E flat in the bass, and then a G. And then here's a surprise in our first surprise, uh, parallel minor, E flat minor, so cool. And then B minor, so dark. And then a real weird tritone sort of substitution world here. It goes so beautiful. Now in the score that I have, there's an ah tempo section next and we have typical fill glass arpeggios. And the arpeggios are like this. Here's a C minor arpeggio. And it goes right down to B minor. Now there's something really creepy about C minor going to B minor. 
They're very close to each other, and they're really kind of weirdly dark. Listen to how it sounds in context. Here's our C minor. Love that tritone. Now, I'm back to a regular C minor with E flat in the bass there. And this moment in the bass where it goes... very horror movie and really dark. It sounds great on organ. <laughs> I'm going to play that again. We'll continue because it's just one of the most beautiful moments in the score. C minor. A flat. And then this kind of lovely E major to C minor over E flat. Chromatically up to G. Very low C, as low a C I can as I can play on the piano. It's very dark and beautiful. Well, Glass has used simple melody and familiar instrumental forms, the Alberti bass, arpeggios, repeated block chords with strong tensions built in to create this kind of propulsive, exciting horror score. It sounds just terrific on piano. The, the score itself is worth listening to, and there have been a couple of adaptations of it as well that you can find on the web. I, I, I'll just put in a plug for a musical literacy here. It's really great looking at scores because it, it gives you this input. It broadens my horizons to read through things and to look at the granular details of how those dissonant passing chords and that's like the choice of like a harm ascending harmonic minor uh, or ascending melodic minor which one is it going to be how is that passing chord going to work it's great stuff well i hope this has been useful like and subscribe ding the bell you'll be notified when i do my videos and i will see you next time mm -hmm.